Som ung knægt ville Mark Howard allerhelt til at være wrestler, men Marks far og bedstefar fik overtalt ham til at droppe de planer og i stedet kaste sig over fodbold. Som syvårig blev Howard med ind i Bar Hill, en lokal klub i Manchester. Talentet var åbenlyst, og som 10 år stod Mark Howard over for sin hidtidens sværeste beslutning. In in just a general week, um, I would train with Manchester on a Monday, train with Bolton on a Wednesday, uh, Manchester City on a Friday, then play locally on the weekend. So it was quite hectic at, at that time. And then I had to make a decision which club I wanted to sign. And it was a big one really because I was 10 years old and um, but you know I made my decision go to Man United. It was local. I had a few friends there and um, so I think it was a good decision. Men efter et år 10 i Manchester United blev det klart for Mark Howard at fremtiden ikke lå i store klubben. I 2006 blev han fritstillet. It's not a big thing, shock really because there's a lot of players that come and I was playing with Giuseppe Rossa, PK and they wasn't in the first team. They was also just exactly where I was. So when they told us they, my contract was out, it was like a weight lifted off your shoulders in a way, mm. because then you can go out to other clubs and you want to gain experience. And I wasn't uh, like affected by it at all. I was in a way, like I said, it was like a weight off my shoulders. I could go out, get a club, and, and make a, a name for myself that way. Mm. But it's also it's, it is disappointing because you've been there for so long and you've got all the coaches who, like you've known for so long and the physios and you've got the guys there. But um, no, I wouldn't say I was so disappointed. På en ferie i Mexico bibede der en sms ind fra Howards tidligere træner i Manchester, René Mjulsten. Han stod nu i spidsen for Brøndby og kunne godt bruge Mark Howards kvaliteter i forsvaret på Vestegn. He knew I was out of contract and I was I was talking to a few clubs. I was talking to Charlton, I was talking to Coventry. Um, and then he asked me would I come to to Brøndby and I just said look it's a big step. I was 20 years old. Not many English players go outside the country at, at that age. Um, So I had a little think about it. Then he said, "Come over for a few days and see what you think. It's a big club." And I didn't. I only knew Bromby when they played Man United in the Champions League. Obviously, I've heard of the club. So then I came over there and I seen what how big a club it was, and the city was nice, and everybody was speaking English, which was a big, big plus. If if he wouldn't have given me the text message asking me to come over, I never would have come. Well, looking back on it now, I was 20 years old and I was a regular. I was playing each time, and I was playing from reserve level, training with the first team sometimes at Man United to go playing. Like at a first team level, week in week out, it's a big step up. And to be honest, I wish I was um, I was a little bit more bedded in. Like I'd play a game and just play a few games and taken out just a little. Because I was still only 20 years old, and um, it was it was I think it was quite hard at first. But after a while, like 22, I, I sort of adapted and I, I um, adjusted to life in Denmark quite well. 59 kampe og et enkelt mål blev det til i Brøndby trøjen en midterforsvaren i 2009 skiftet til AGF. I was speaking to a few clubs about where to go and maybe go back home to England. And then I spoke to Brian Steen and uh, he sold the club to me basically because I like the way he is, his passion about the club. And I'm just, I just liked his character and uh, I decided to, st decided to stay. My girlfriend was happy to stay. And so I, I chose a gift and, and uh, I'm happy with my decision. It's been quite tough. Um, Obviously, it's my first year. I've played in the first division only. I've played in the SAS League every time. Um, going to going away to places is, isn't quite fun. Um, but when you're playing at home, it's nice. You know, you still got the nice big stadium. Um, but like I said, it's our own fault. We're in that division, but we're doing a good job to get back out of it. So I'm happy. I have a a good understanding with everyone in the changing room. And there's some good guys here. I've met some really good friends. I'm 25 years old now, um, so I'm more mature. And um, I'm playing, so I'm happy at the moment. Um, it's, it's probably been one of the happiest times I've been in Denmark. Obviously, I have big ambitions. I would like maybe to go home one day and play in the Premier League. That's my dream. Um, but at the start of the season, I, I, I said that I would stay in AGF for the year, get put back in the SAS Liga. So it would be nice next year to actually play in the SAS Liga again because it's been a bit of a blip in everybody's you know, careers playing the first division. But it's our own doing. Um, so no one really can blame, blame anyone. Um, but obviously I have big ambitions. One day maybe I'd like to finish my career in America when I'm older. Um, but like I said, I'm also enjoying AGF at the moment. I'm happy here, my girlfriend's happy here, and maybe I could stay here. Um, but we'll wait and see what the future holds.